half the cylinder count, 350 kilograms in added weight, and no V8 war cry. There is a laundry list of reasons why the new Mercedes AMG C63 won't resonate with performance enthusiasts the way that predecessor models have over the past two decades. But hey, it's 2024, and we should know better than to judge a book by its cover. So here it is, the new C63 in beautiful Northeast Tasmania. Let's see what it's really like. For AMG enthusiasts, the new C63 takes a very different approach to a typical mid-size performance sedan, but it has a huge point to prove despite missing its signature V8. Building on the wares of the regular C-Class family launched in 2023, the C63's new hybrid powertrain teams with a host of dynamic upgrades in its fight to long-standing rivals like the BMW M3 and the Audi RS4 and RS5. In isolation, it doesn't look all that different to a garden variety C-Class, with only the front and rear aprons, front fenders and bonnet differing cosmetically. But underneath, it's a different story. There's been a long-held view in the performance community that only milk and orange juice should come in two-litre packages, but this new C63 really challenges that perception. So what we have is the very well-known M139 two-litre turbo petrol four-cylinder that's been in the A45 since 2019. Monstrous outputs from that alone, but that's combined with an electric motor on the rear axle. So 0 to 100 takes 3.4 seconds claimed, and because you have internal combustion up front, electric motor on the rear axle, it's actually 50-50 weight distribution as well. There's a lot of marketing rhetoric about the links between the F1 team and this car, but there is a little bit in that. So we have an electric gas-driven turbocharger, so that is said to be developed in-house by the F1 team and said to provide more immediate response as a result. Other than that, we do have a couple of firsts for this car, so rear-wheel steering and all-wheel drive. That's the first time that's been bundled into a C63. And all of those upgrades have imposed penalties in terms of weight and in terms of price. So the official curb weight is now up to 2.1 tonnes, while the price has risen about $30,000 to just shy of 190k before on-road costs. Inside the new C63 builds on the wares of the existing C-Class and the cabin is just a beautiful place to spend time. Nice materials, wonderful execution of tech, and yes, there is a sporty flavor infused into the entire mix. There's lots of incidental storage. You do pay a little bit in terms of space for the second row and the boot area, but it's a very easy compromise to make when you've got this much performance on offer. All told, some might find the cabin a little same-same when put alongside a garden variety C-Class. The bigger perspective issue here for everyday drivers is the shrunken boot proportions as a result of the electric motor at the rear. But hey, it's a small price to pay for the performance on offer. So straight away, Yes, you can tell you're in something sporty because there's a lot of tactility to the drive experience. I can feel the coarse chip bitumen underneath me. I can hear the rumble through the cabin and everything feels tight, tied down and firm. The electric drivetrain is pretty well modulated. It picks up speed fairly effortlessly. There's top electric speed of 125 kilometers an hour. And at the moment I've got about three quarters of electric range showing and it's indicating 10 kilometers call it nine kilometers so i think you know the claim is 15 k's ev range i reckon in reality it's probably closer to 11 or 12 which is no great surprise but this is very calm and very civilized and yes it is very different to the c63 experience traditionally but there is a lot of upside to this you know early getaways from home i can imagine this ev drivetrain would be a lot more civilized in built-up neighborhoods even in terms of that fuel efficiency you know if your commute is 10 12 kilometers each day you could theoretically do it each way in ev mode it's really efficient and really quick with recuperating energy especially when you are getting into it so that brings us to the next component i'm going to switch to comfort some pretty special roads it goes without saying in Tasmania and today we've tackled a couple of targa stages including the sidling we're doing it backwards 
but it is a very undulating, very challenging piece of road that deserves respect. But in a car like this, it does tend to streamline it a little bit. You've got such great electronic aids at your disposal. The one thing I will say that is that it struggles to harness or control the weight in terms of the ride. So when you have pitter patter style bumps, comfort is the way to go. It obviously does the best job at ironing out those really sharp bumps. But when you have elongated washouts, which are really commonplace on these rugged Targa style roads or any even just regional roads around Australia, that really challenges the comfort suspension. There's a lot of up and down movement and it, the weight doesn't feel all that restrained. It feels a little bit unwieldy at times, especially if you have a really sharp bump into a corner that throws the car out of balance. I'm gonna to switch to Sport Plus and I'm going to change the gearbox to manual mode because that just seems to stop the, the stabby sort of throttle action and allows you to really find a groove with this car. So straight away, there's a little bit more sound from the drivetrain. It actually doesn't sound bad. I wouldn't say it sounds as good as a V8, there's no disguising that, but you get a nice crack on upshifts, all digitally enhanced of course, and there's enough emotion and theatre in here to let you know you're not driving a C300, you're in something a little bit sportier than that. Sound and theatre aside, there is no denying that Mercedes AMG has ratcheted up the turn of speed with this car in plug-in hybrid guys, and I'm about to show you why. I think it's a combination of all-wheel drive, but also the rear-wheel steering, and it has given this C63 so much more speed out of corners, between corners, and on undulating roads like I'm on at the moment, yes, it's heavier, yes, it's longer, it's bigger than before, it has no reason to offer more agility, but with that tech and with the all-wheel drive system at play, it does. It has turned this car into a genuine point-and-shoot machine. That's a very different philosophy to C63s of old. You would argue that they were more or less straight-line weapons. Maybe not the most recent generation before this one, but certainly the early ones, the engine was the highlight. Whereas this, yes, you were missing that sound and theatre, but you were getting a car that I'd argue has a high performance ceiling, much higher performance ceiling than the V8 sibling. And even in my very amateur hands, it is super, super fast. You know, I'd argue that an RS4, RS5, or an M3 really is gonna struggle to stick with this car on these roads. And certainly the V8 predecessor, well, you'd want a pretty handy steerer to be able to keep pace with this thing. You know, even a mere mortal can drive it fast. I've shown that today. So, yeah, it's, it's a very different experience, the C63, but if you look at it with an open mind, I guarantee you, and it's shown me firsthand today, on the right roads, in the right settings, once you find the, your groove with this car, you're going to walk away as satisfied as the V8. In day-to-day -day conveyance, yes, it's not gonna quite have that same level of emotion. It's not that, C63 experience as we know and love it. But I would argue that on the other side of the coin, having just driven what I've driven at the speed I've been able to drive it at, it's given me smiles for different reasons. And I think that's the whole point. The other upside here is fuel consumption. We averaged about 12.5 litres per 100 k's on test, including a lengthy section of dynamic driving. That's not worlds apart from the outgoing V8, but it is an improvement. Well, there's said to be so many parallels between the new C63 and Formula One, and that's kind of where I'm gonna leave it. I think that this car is a lot like when Formula One changed from the V8 engine to the hybrid engine in 2014. I think we're always going to pine for the older generations of V8 C63 and look back on it through rose-tinted glasses. But the reality is that the speed, the performance, and all of the tangibles on road, when you're on the right sort of road, are better than ever before. This is a super impressive new vehicle. You've just got to look at it through a slightly different lens.